afternoon and welcome to the Gateway Live Update. Coming to you live from Gateway Christian Church in Historic Woodbury, New Jersey. And coming daily during coronavirus. Uh, we began the end of last February and we're approaching our first year anniversary, which we never wanted to reach. And neither did you, hoping this thing would be over before that. But we continue to pray against coronavirus and I hope you'll join us if you'll stay with us till the end of this 15 minute broadcast yes we're just a 15 minute bible study devotion and prayer coming to you daily monday through friday and um we're in first john we're beginning chapter two today if you want to make your way there the beginning of first john chapter two that not gospel john but first john and will begin and just a reminder tonight 7 30 p.m we're in the end of chapter 10 of matthew and all of chapter 11 verse by verse uh, really good stuff so join us tonight we'll be live in the sanctuary if you're worried about getting snow in your shoe or driving on the paved roads or whatever issues you might have or listen and this is serious if you're worried about walking in here or, or, or slipping or something stay home you can watch us on uh, we'll be on youtube live facebook live boxcast live and or you can watch the reruns whatever you want to do stay warm stay safe uh, this stuff should clear up by the weekend and um, again uh, it's still uh, snow flurrying out believe it or not still today even though they said it was over last night that's what you guys that listen to the days get because they don't know. Only God does. Amen. All right. Well, let's um, open our Bibles to 1 John chapter 2. And this passage, again, we just ended last week as we began 1 John. We, we ended in John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 yesterday about how God wants to keep you plugged in fellowship, how God wants to keep you purified as he, the blood of Jesus purifies us from all unrighteousness and also how God wants us to confess our sin. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. And here we are in chapter two, uh, the verse between that, which I just quoted one nine and two one is, if we say we have no sin, we make him out to be a liar. Now, it says here in verse 1, my little children. Hey, that's what we are. John, an old man, and he's calling us children. My little children. I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. Now, that's an important thing. He's writing this to us. So we don't sin. Now, sin doesn't just mean going out and doing something bad or transgressing God's law. Sin is not being good enough. See, when we think of sin all the time, we're thinking, oh man, look at him, he's over there smoking marijuana. You know, what sin is, is missing the mark, not hitting the perfect bullseye. And say, maybe not doing enough what you committed, what you vowed to the Lord. <clears throat> That's just as bad in, as in his eye. Sin. And, he, and John's saying, I'm writing that you don't sin, either transgression or missing the mark. He says, I'm writing that you don't. <clears throat> Some Christians today, in 2021, they think it's okay to sin. You know, I'm a Christian, I, you know, I, I prayed the prayer, or I, I went forward at a service, and they think that that's good enough. But First John... 2, 1 says, my little children, I write these things to you that you sin not, that you may not sin. And it's God's will for us not to sin. Even though you know that it's never going to be that way. I know you know that. I know I know that. It, it'll never happen. But that's still God's goal. God doesn't lower his standard because I can't do it. God still says, hey, don't sin. Don't miss the mark. Don't walk over that line, that boundary there. God still says that. 
and and John saying, "I'm write these things that you may not sin." And then you're saying, "Man, I, I sin all the time." That's right. And then there's the continuation of the verse. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Listen, if you've been born again, you have the best defense attorney ever. And that's Jesus. That's what this advocate, uh, Greek words, parakletos. It means defense attorney. That's what it means. You have the best defense attorney ever with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're his. And again, just simply by being born again, as Jesus taught. Remember in John chapter 3 when he talked to Nicodemus, unless a person is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, how can I be born again? I entered my mother's womb a second time and be born. And Jesus said, unless a person is born of water and the spirit, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, spirit gives birth to spirit. Don't be blown away by me saying you must be born again. So a born again is, is necessary to be washed in Jesus' blood. And we do that by hearing the gospel, by, by believing it, by confessing Jesus as Lord by, with, with our mouth, by repenting of our sins, by being immersed in water upon confession of faith, and by walking with the Lord and fellowshipping. We're born again by faith, by trusting in Jesus. And if that's never happened in your life, if you never trusted him, if you never really trusted Jesus, I mean really trusted him too, trusted him as your Lord and Savior, believed, cling on to, clinging to him, relying on him. If you've never done that, then you need to do that. And it's a simple thing. It's simple as asking him to come in. It's real easy. But that is the necessary part, is being saved. Because once you are his, he becomes your defense attorney. And that's what this passage is saying. That's why it's so amazing. When you look at the passage that we're in here, it's saying, you know, I write these things, you know, it's him, but if anyone does them, we have an advocate. A defense attorney with the Father, Jesus, the Messiah, the righteous one. That's what it says literally. Jesus, the Messiah, the righteous one. He is my defense attorney. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And every time I sin, all the Father needs to do is, is look at his son. The marks in his hands, the wounds in his feet, his marred face and body. And he sees that my sin has been completely atoned for and propitiated. That means God took away his wrath, turning it aside because it was placed on his son. And therefore my sin is paid for past, present, and future. Your sin, if you're born again, is paid for past, present, and future. But see, listen, you must be born again. See, the thing, if you're not really in Christ, and there's a lot of religious people around, and there's a lot of people in cults, and there's a lot of people in false religious systems, and they think they're okay with God. But listen, you must be born again. You have to be. You know, because I, I get people all the time, they argue with me about simple, stupid things that they should know. Simple, foolish things that they should know about. And the simple foolish things that they should know when you're born again come automatically. Listen, when I got saved, I knew just like you did. I didn't like say, oh, I hope this is the right way. I knew. And God unlocks the word of God to you because the Holy Spirit's inside of you. And you guys know that. That's why Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I'm one of his sheep. I hear his voice. You're one of his sheep. You'll hear his voice. But listen, it doesn't come automatically because you're religious or because you go to church or even if you read the Bible, you have to be born again. And then you get Jesus, the defense attorney. So John, the apostle, is writing to Christians in this letter. That's why he said in chapter one about if we have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. 
And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is if we're in him. He presumes that you're a believer reading this letter. You need to understand that. Because some people read it and think it's for them and they don't know Jesus. You need to know him. See, I don't just know about the Lord. I know him. That's how I know his voice. That's how I understand things. That's how I don't get led astray because I stay with him. People that get off of him, they get led astray. That's why you need to abide in Christ because he's my defense attorney. No matter what I do, he's at the right hand of the Father. And and I told you this before, but I used to think that when I sinned, Jesus is up there saying, oh, that hey, he's mine, Father. I know he's a Dumbo, but he's mine. And I used to joke around saying he had to do that a lot just for me. <clears throat> but in reality, it's the glorified Jesus in heaven seated at the right hand of the Father who makes intercession just by being at the right hand of the Father. Just being there. Because I am in him. This is the reality. If you're in Christ, you're in him. You're in Christ. You're not just. That's why Paul says in Galatians, he says very clear. And, and he's talking to the church in Galatia who thought they needed this kind of work salvation deal. And he said, no, no, no. As men, he said, listen, we're all, me and you, are sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That's Galatians 3, 26 and 27. All, and if you be Abraham's, if you be Christ's, if you're the Messiah's, you're Abraham's seed indeed and heirs according to the covenant. We get the in the covenant. And then, which makes it even better, is verse 28 says that as many of us who were baptized into Christ, as many of us who were immersed in water, and united with Jesus Christ. Listen to this. As many of us who are immersed into Christ are clothed with Christ. We're in him. That's what it means. So when God, just like you heard the adage before, when God looks at me, he sees Jesus. That's what he sees. Why? Because I'm clothed in Christ. I'm wearing him. And God sees that. And Jesus is perfect. And he atoned for my sin. And he perpetuated away, he perpetuated away God's wrath from us onto himself. And he intercedes for us now. I'm in Christ. That's a great thing. I want to jump up and down. Jump up and down. I do. Don't you want to jump up and down? Because I'm in Christ. And if I be Christ's, I'm Abraham's seed indeed, and heirs according to the covenant. That's good news, guys. That's really great. I'm clothed with Christ. I, King James says, put on Christ. I put him on. Just like a, a garment you put on, and he covers me completely. And you put him on. And that's a blessing thing. Again, if you don't believe me, go read Galatians 3, 26, 27, and chapter 4, verse 1. It says exactly what I just told you. But I hope that you would study and know these things because you don't have to worry about all this silly stuff. Because if we're in Christ, he takes care of our sin just by being seated at the right hand of the Father. And that's why it says right here, we have a defense attorney, advocate. Jesus, the Messiah, the righteous one. That's what it says literally. If you like literal translation in the Greek, it says Jesus, the Messiah, the righteous one. He is the righteous one. That means there's no other righteous one on earth. It's only Jesus. My righteousness is in him. See, because I told you I'm in him. That's where your righteousness is, in him, because you're in him. It's not because you got it together and you stopped smoking and stopped cussing. That's not what did it. You stopped doing those things because you know him, because you're in a relationship with him. That's why you did. It wasn't that doing that saved you. No. What saved you was trusting in him and his finished work on the cross. That's what saved you. That's what saved me. And so he's there in heaven, the righteous one, the only righteous one. That's what he is. And look, I ran out of time on verse one. We'll pick up tomorrow in verse two, which is even more awesome than this. So 
We're going to pray. And I encourage you guys to continue to pray as we pray during coronavirus that it will end real soon. I don't want to make the one-year anniversary of this webcast. I really don't. Meaning I don't want us to continue on to the very end of February and of March. And it looks like it's going to happen that way because the political powers that be, and I do believe, I'm sorry, if I offend you, but I believe they're political powers that do this and not actual things going on. So let's pray. And uh, with Carmel, if, if there's someone that was once a good Christian person, that was a true believer and has been baptized, but now a hypocrite, do they have to be baptized again? Absolutely not. You're only baptized once. Once you're water baptized, you identify with Christ. You can do all kinds of horrible things. And you can, all you got to do, as Jesus said, is have your feet washed. You, you come and confess your sins. That's all you have to do. That's why 1 John 1, 9. Go back to chapter 1, verse 9. Real easy. See how stuff is real easy. And again, um, we're going to pray now. And uh, we're going to go a little over today. And don't forget, we'll pray again tonight at 9 p.m. Join us at 9 p.m., whatever you're doing. Say, you know, just pray. Even if it's a minute, 60 seconds, come on. You t pause your TV, turn it off like we do, and pray for a minute. I'll be done Bible study tonight, probably by quarter till. And, uh, and, and I'll pray at 9. I'll be home with my wife praying, or I'll be praying with someone else. So please join us, please. 9 p.m. tonight, and join us now. And Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we... We do, we come against coronavirus and everything it represents and everything behind it, Lord, both you know, physically, spiritually, and politically, Lord, and we bind it in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to remove it from your people, Lord. Remove it from this country. Remove it from this planet in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We look to your hand for healing, Lord. We thank you for washing us in your blood, Lord Jesus, and we thank you that we're in you, and when the Father looks at us. He sees you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. If you have any questions or comments, don't feel free to inbox me or uh, write me or email, however you want to do it. And we'll see you tonight. It's a blessing. Um, again, these Second John 2 1 is a blessing. And, and what we read yesterday, it's all blessing. So let's get blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow at this time. Don't forget tonight, 730, verse by verse, through Matthew end of chapter 10 and chapter 11. We'll see you then. Until we greet you, may God's richest and blessed be yours.